Jeff Zimmerman, everybody, your next storyteller. <laughs> Usually a lot shorter. You know? <clears throat> so I have a lot more in common with Lance Armstrong than an abiding love of road biking. <clears throat> uh, earlier this summer, I was in an MMA class, and this little Dominican kid kicked me in the nuts really, really hard, <laughs> which he shouldn't have been able to do. I'd been slow, and he'd been getting through my guard really easily. And I, I ended up going home, and then I ended up going to the doctor, where we discovered a tumor that was roughly the size and density of a Cadbury egg. The doctor said, this has got to come out really, really soon. And I said, well, how soon are we talking here? And he said, how, what are you doing tomorrow? So I came home, and you know, they cut all the cancer out. I got away with not getting chemo or radiation, which at its surface is a very good thing, but that's kind of where my problem started. Um, I experienced these massive waves of uh, intense depression that happen almost as though they're shot out of a cannon at me. Um, and that, it's like a giant black bird just flies and sits right on my chest and it starts to whisper things in my ear when I'm supposed to be sleeping and healing. And that first night, <clears throat> the bird said to me, you know, you need to take it really easy from now on because things are different now. Your life has totally changed very quickly. And, um, you know, go easy on yourself. People are going to find it very, very hard to relate to you. You're going to think you connect with them, but you're not going to be able to. And the problem is that fucking bird always makes perfect sense because it was really, really hard to, it's really hard to connect with people about this. Um, I feel tremendously fortunate that my, I have so many friends and so many family that uh, kind of circled around me when the surgery happened and they just showered me with all this love and affection, which I really needed. And really, if you're feeling unloved or a little lonely, I can't recommend cancer strongly enough. <laughs> it really gives you the boost that you're, you're looking for in the short term. <laughs> But like so many intense solutions, it's awesome for a little bit, and then it kind of goes away. Because the kind of the narrative has been is like, look, Jeff's fine. Look at him. He's, he's all, you know, he's back. He's going back to the gym. I look perfectly healthy. And everybody says, how are you doing? You look, you're looking great, man. You're looking great. How are you feeling? And I don't really know what to say because, like, you don't want to just say to your friend that cares about you, well, I feel like an android that has been programmed to act just like Jeff Zimmerman. I feel like a photocopy of a photocopy where the essential information is there, but the nuances are gone. Uh, I, don't really, I don't really know what's going on anymore. And uh, when I was talking to the bird one night, I, you know, he was saying, you know, it's, he said, yeah, it's like you've lost your passion or something, dude. Like you used to be a lot more vital and energetic. And it's almost like, you know, this, this, this Jungian thing has happened and you've just been sort of stripped of everything that you loved and really cared about doing. It's like you, it's like you're, you're just operating at like 40% and you're, you can't even be bothered to mourn for it. And I was like, I know, it's like, I, it's like I've been half neutered or something. And the bird said, well, um, you have. <laughs> so I've got to start talking to somebody about this other than this, big bird made out of depression. And uh, I asked at Sloan Kettering if they had a support group that maybe I could join. And my nurse said, no, we really don't. Uh, no, we don't have anything for you. And I was like, really? Best cancer center on earth. You guys can't get something together real quick? <laughs> you sure about this? I've seen your commercials. And they said, no, nah, this affects young guys. And young guys, you know, they really don't want to talk about it. So. Maybe you could uh, go to another group and kind of, and I was like, what, sit in on a kidney one and just make it all about me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, that, that, that's healing for me. Um, so I don't really, I don't, I don't know where to turn. And then sometimes I feel really, really guilty when I'm getting CAT scans and 
you sit there and you see the children that have cancer and they're really small and they're really gray and they're really losing this battle. And I sit there and I know I'm gonna be fine and I feel guilty for being so self-pitying. And I think all of us New Yorkers know that there's no special brand of self-abuse quite like beating yourself up for beating yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so, and then this happened. When you go to get a CAT scan, you have to sit there for an hour, hour and a half or so ahead of time and drink this pink liquid that is supposed to be sweet, but it's radioactive dye. And I found that it tastes almost exactly like robot piss sweetened with antifreeze. And I, I was sitting there, again, I, I just need somebody to relate to, and I, I saw this Indian couple, and there was a woman who was completely bald, and I'm reasonably sure it had a double mastectomy, and she sat there and was going into a prayer pose and beginning to meditate, and her husband moved over and sat next to me, and then a nurse came and took her away to get her CAT scan, and he kind of elbows me, and he says, what are you in for? And I told him, and he winced, because every guy always does. You sh there's something wrong with you if you don't. And I had told my best friend, I was like, dude, I'm so depressed right now, and my best friend said, I gotta keep this thing going. Um, <clears throat> my best friend said, well, you really should be. I hope you are depressed. If you're not depressed, you're fucking crazy. And I told this Indian guy that, and he laughed, and he said, well, you know, uh, in my religion, we believe in destiny, that things happen to you, and for a reason, and you just have to learn how to cope with it. It just happens, and you just adjust. And if I were to look at this cancer in, in my wife's life, I would have to say it's not an entirely bad thing. We're close, I'm incapable of talking about this without kind of losing it a little here, so forgive me. But uh, he said, we're closer than we've ever been. In a, in a 27 year marriage, there are ups and there are downs, and when she got diagnosed, we were on a down. And now we're communicating better and we're closer with our children, our grown children who have left the house and are not even Hindu. We are closer with them than ever. And then he turned and grabbed me by the hand and he said, oh, something good is gonna come, <laughs> I'm sorry. Something good is gonna come of this. All you have to do is find it and let it into your heart. You're young and you're strong and you're gonna live. You have to decide that you're going to live and then you really know what it is to live. And then I was able to cry and let it all out after about eight, what, six months of just being strong for everybody but, but myself. And the nurse took me away and the guy looked at me and gave me this two big thumbs up <laughs> and I never saw him again. And now I think about him all the time, constantly, because <clears throat> when that bird's visiting me and he's telling me a lot of reasonable things that are really fucking me up, I just think about that Indian guy and I know that one day I'm gonna believe him. One day it's gonna happen eventually and that big bird's gonna just fly away.